Today I'm going to take you through a 30 minute chest and abs dumbbell workout. This workout is to develop strength and muscle size. We're going to do this as a follow along. I'm going to use one heavy pair of dumbbells for the first section and one lighter pair of dumbbells for the second section. I'll be using a bench, but that's optional. I'll show you variations with or without. We're gonna kick things off with a brief body weight warm-up before we get into that main workout. This warm-up contains four 30 second intervals. You just do them with your body weight. And first up, we have an inchworm. We're gonna do a chest to floor inchworm. So we're gonna walk it out into a press-up position drop your chest down don't worry if you can't do a press up you can just slope back up to the top just getting the shoulders moving so i want you to hinge at the hip reach down towards your toes walk it out let's drop your chest to the floor walk it back touch your toes back up and repeat We're gonna link this straight into a kneeling position. So on this next rep, let's come onto your knees. I want you to reach forwards and then pull back into a W shape. Reach forwards, pull back into a W. So spread those shoulder blades, reach, and then open the chest, pulling the hands back into that W. Keep repeating this. And we're going to link this straight into some reach under and ups. So hands on the floor, which to reach under and through, and then point up towards the ceiling. Reach under and through, point up. Keep going with that. Might get a little click in your back. That's absolutely fine. We'll transition this straight to the other side in a few seconds. Great one for opening out that chest and upper back. And switch. I'm doing this warm up off my knuckles, but that's just preference for me to save my wrists, but feel free to do it on the flats of your palms. So there's two rounds. So after this, we're going straight back to those chest to floor inchworms. Take it into the press up position, walk back, hinge, chest to floor. into a kneeling position, spread the shoulder blades back into that W. If you find this uncomfortable kneeling, you can just do it standing, that's fine. Going for that T-spine rotation. So reach under, drop the shoulder, reach up, gaze up towards the ceiling. Stay on this far side for 30 seconds and then we'll switch. switch sides. Great job, that's the warm-up complete. So we're gonna move on to our first strength section. I'm gonna use some 17 and a half kilo dumbbells. That's about 38 pounds each. 
but just make do with whatever is right for you. First exercise is going to be an incline neutral grip bench press or just a neutral grip floor press if you haven't got a bench. We're going to do three rounds, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off in the first section, then we'll switch up the exercises and do the same format with lighter dumbbells. So get ready to go for that neutral grip bench press. Got a slight incline on the bench, helping to target the upper chest. We want to control the way down, nice smooth tempo. Feel the stretch and press. Neutral grip means that your palms are facing one another. We'll be doing some more conventional grip press in a couple of exercises time. Squeeze the pecs together as you press. Great job, all right. Let's superset this with an ab exercise. We're gonna be doing some alternating V-ups. If you find it uncomfortable coming all the way up onto your tailbone, just make the movement slightly smaller and just do it more like a crunch action. All right, next up we've got a wider grip overhand flat bench press or wide grip flat floor press, whichever one suits you. So elbows coming out, should still have from a bird's eye view down, almost like an arrow shape with your arms. So although I'm saying wide grip, I don't want your elbows to be too high in the sockets. You still want to have them subtly tucked down towards your sides, but we're using this double overhand grip on this one rather than the neutral. Feel the pec stretch, pin your shoulder blades back to the bench, squeeze your chest muscle consciously. Try not to rest at the top too long. You can pause at the bottom under that stretch if you like. Great job. Back to an ab superset. We're gonna go onto that bicycle crunch now. So we're gonna go opposite elbow towards the opposite knee. I actually like to touch the other elbow on the floor whilst I tap one on the knee. Helps me to get a really nice oblique twist hitting those ab muscles running down your sides try not to crank your neck forwards keep a relatively open chin and chest position relax your jaw as well if you're struggling to get to your knee just get as close as you can Great job, you got 30 seconds off. There's one round done, we've got two to go. So we're going back to that neutral grip, floor or incline bench press. If you wanna go a bit heavier, feel free to jump it up. I've gone a little bit light today, still recovering from a minor wrist operation, but doing all right. Okay, round two of three. Keep that neutral grip, feel the pecs, press, squeeze the chest together.
always finish your rep even if the beeper goes <laughs> onto those v-ups like i said if you'd rather do more of an alternating crunch up where your lower back stays mostly on the floor that's fine So your legs are alternating, hands are going every time. I'm actually leaving one heel on the floor whilst the other leg comes up. Although I've got slightly bent legs, I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep the angle at my knee consistent throughout the whole rep. Onto that flat floor or bench press with that double overhand grip like you're riding a motorbike. Coming out fairly wide. Just getting a nice stretch on the pecs. back to the floor for those bicycle crunches. Feeling the burn now. Keep it going. Oh, definitely getting the abs fired up. So we're on to our third and final round. Controlling that tempo on the way down, feeling the stretch of new pecs, and then squeezing your chest muscles together as you press. Onto the V-ups. These are a burner. So if you're struggling, coming all the way up like this, this is that crunch style variation. You can see I'm still reaching into the crunch. I can keep my lower back flat to the floor and just reaching my upper back off. But obviously if you've got that full V up, that's great. Ooh. Ooh. 
Final set of flat bench or floor press. Great job. So I'm getting about 12 reps done there. So it's perfect for building muscle. Let's get that final set done in this section, doing the bicycle crunch. Oh, great job. You've got a minute off to get yourself a little sip of water. If you're enjoying training with me, you'd like to do some more, then I'm launching a virtual members only studio. And I also have some written dumbbell ebook programs, which you can check out. I'll link all those in the description. This next section though, I'm gonna use a lighter pair of dumbbells. I'm gonna go some 10 kilo dumbbells. That's about 22 pounds each. We're gonna do the same format. I'm gonna start off though with an incline dumbbell fly. You can do these flat on the floor, so you can just do a flat fly. If you've got a cushion to prop your back up, I recommend that, because you'll get a little bit more range of motion in your fly. 40 on, 20 off. Three rounds, four exercises. So we want to keep a nice consistent elbow angle. So you've got a shallow, a small bend in the elbow. And you're keeping that same angle for the whole rep. I see a lot of people bending the arms as they come down. That's not what we're looking for. Great job. Okay, we're on to some reverse crunches next. So you're going to lie on your back. We have our hands by our side. We're gonna roll the knees towards the chest. Head can be on or off the floor. I personally prefer to keep my head off the floor. I find that I can keep my abs engaged better. I'm less likely to arch my lower back, but I have got a massive neck, <laughs> probably bigger than my head. So it's easier for me to hold my head out. So if you're struggling and you haven't got a massive neck, then just put your head on the floor. Make sure your back's not arching off as you bring your feet down. All right, I'm gonna do some negative push-ups now. I know a lot of people hate push-ups. If you wanna just hold a press up plank position for 40 seconds, that's absolutely fine. And when I say negative, I mean, we're gonna just be focusing on the slow lowering phase only. So 
Nice, low, eccentric movement. And then when you get to the bottom, you can either push up or go to your knees and push up. So full press on the way down. And then press to the top or do a kneeling press up to the top. But I think most people will be able to do the full negative. I understand if you can't do the full press from the bottom, I'll take just a little reset back to the top off the knees. Or if you've just opted for that press up plank, good for you, that's great also. All right, we've got a reaching crunch. I'm gonna take both dumbbells for this, but you could just take one dumbbell. This is not a full sit up, this is a small stack and squeeze action for the abs. So I'm just gonna stack and squeeze back down. So I'm keeping most of my lower back actually on the floor. I'm just drawing my rig ribs down, reaching up, squeeze my abs. Like I said, you could just do this with one dumbbell. You could even do it with no dumbbells, just reaching up. Great job. There's round one of three done. Get ready for those flies. That reverse crunch to reaching crunch is a nice little pair. Getting the hips rolling for one and then getting the sternum rolling for the other. Remember, these flies, we're looking for a consistent elbow angle. Fairly wide arm position. Let's go. Feel that stretch. You don't need to spend much time in the middle. I actually don't want you to bring the dumbbells all the way together. The dumbbells have no resistance at the top, so we don't need to bring them all the way in. If you had cables, then yes, I recommend touching the handles together. But with dumbbells, that's just not how the resistance works. Squeeze those pecs. Let's get that reverse crunch going. The reverse crunch is actually easier the more open your knee angle is and the harder the more bent it is. But whichever you're choosing, you should be keeping the same knee angle. So if I pick 90 degrees like this, I'm trying to keep 90 degrees all the way through the rep. If I've picked a closer angle, again, I'm trying to do the same. Typically people will flick their heels to make it easier, but we're looking, keep it nice and neat. Imagine you're trying to get your quads, this is your thigh muscles to touch your chest. All right, so we've either got beginners gonna just be holding a press up plank, intermediates gonna be doing a full negative to kneeling positive, and the more advanced is just gonna be a really controlled negative phase with a regular push up at the top. So if you're doing that kneeling reset, I just come down like this, drop the knees, reset, and back to the top. Okay, we've got that reaching crunch. Whether you're taking, I'll show you how to do it with one dumbbell. So, depends what weight you've got. But you 
could just have a single dumbbell held around the sides like this. Straight arms the whole time. Squeeze back down. Minimize any time spent at the bottom. You can hold at the top for a second. We're trying to maximize time under tension. Minimize time not under tension. Great job, we're nearly there. Stick with me. We've got one round to go. This workout is actually part of a 30 workout, six week dumbbell lift series, completely free on YouTube. I'll link the next day in the series at the end of this video, and you'll be able to check out the program guide, which you can download for free in the description as well. That program guide has a few extra tips to go over the program. It has the full calendar schedule of all the workouts within this lift series. It's got a link to a private community group to help support you through the program, which I'm regularly in commenting back to people. It's got a clickable calendar, so you can just click straight to the day rather than having to find it on the YouTube channel as well. Right, reverse crunch. Get into those push-ups. See the press-up plank at the top. You've got full negative press-up to kneeling reset. Where you've got full negative to a full positive. Keep your core tight. So keep your glutes engaged. Slight pelvic tilt, belly button drawn in. Elbows shouldn't flare out too wide. You want them coming back towards your hips a little bit. Bird's eye view down. Your press up should look like an arrow shape with your head being the point of the arrow and the arrow and the elbows being the two sides coming away from the point. It'll be easier on your shoulder that way as well. Right, let's finish this workout with those reaching crunches. Oh. <sighs> 
Well done, thanks so much for joining me. That's a workout complete. Let me know in the comments below, how did you find that workout and where in the world are you following along from? I truly do love to hear that. Here's the next day in that 30 workout, six week free dumbbell YouTube lift series. If you wanna check out any of my ebook programs or my premium members area with exclusive extra workouts, not on my YouTube channel, programs, nutrition tips, and more, check that out in the description. And I'll see you again soon for another workout.